Our next speaker is Divya Sripat. She's a machine learning engineer from Google. Uh, she went to Texas A&M for an MS in computer engineering. And her term is deep learning Divya. <laughs> so please welcome her to the stage. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Divya. I'm representing the Keras team at Google. I'll be going over how Keras is a powerful tool which, which will enable you to perform fast experimentation because going from idea to result as fast as possible is key for good research. Okay, so Keras is a deep learning API written in Python. It's running on top of the machine learning platform you should be familiar with, uh, TensorFlow. Uh, it is an API designed for human beings, not machines, and Keras follows best practices for reducing cognitive load. It's simple, it's flexible, and it's powerful. So it offers consistent and simple APIs. It minimizes the number of user actions, and it gives you meaningful errors for you to debug your um, code. And this makes Keras easy to learn and easy to use. As a Keras user, you are more productive, allowing you to try different ideas faster than your competition. And the ease of use does not come with compromised flexibility. You can still write highly hackable workflows where every functionality is customizable. So the Keras implementations also provide industry strength, performance, and scalability. Um, and also, we know that in the real world, a successful model starts with data collection and ends with production and deployment. And the Keras ecosystem covers every step of machine learning workflow. For example, we have Keras Tuner for hyperparameter optimization, Keras CV for computer vision applications, Keras NLP for natural language processing, et cetera. Also, Keras, like I mentioned before, enables users to get from idea to result as fast as possible. Keras is scalable, so using the TensorFlow distribution strategy API, which is supported natively by Keras, you can easily run your models on large GPU clusters or TPU pods, thousands of devices. So it, it is easy to turn models to products. Models can easily be deployed across a great range of products, like your browser, server, Android, Raspberry Pi, your TPU, et cetera. So Keras has broad adoption in the industry and research community. To name a few organizations and companies using Keras to develop their algorithms are NASA, YouTube, Waymo, et cetera. So Keras is used to solve many difficult real-world problems, and here are a few examples. Uh, deep learning algorithms are deployed on mobile phones um, to screen for eye diseases. And NASA is using Keras for a variety of deep learning algorithms like exoplanet discovery, uh, planetary navigation on the moon, smart robotic astronauts, and much more. Uh, Waymo is using it for you know, self-driving cars. They're using it for computer vision, the segmentation, object detection, et cetera. It's been used in Google Search, Assistant, social media recommendation, robo financing, Translate, Google Translate, et cetera. So here's an example showcasing how simple it is to go from idea to solution in barely a few lines of code using Keras. Let's say you want to build a classifier model from scratch that takes in an image and classifies if it's a cat or a dog. Most basic example here. And Keras offers two ways, two different ways to build your model. One is using a sequential API, which is on the top. Uh, it is appropriate when you are just working with a plain stack of layers, where each layer has exactly one input and one output, and the output of the previous layer is fed to the next layer. So you can basically do that by, like in this example, you have three dense layers. So you could just define three dense layers and enclose it in carousel sequential, and you're good to go. And the second way of doing this is using the functional API, which is appropriate when you want to build graphs of layers, because the main idea is in deep learning, it's usually directed acyclic graphs. You might have multiple inputs, multiple outputs. So 
In that case, you would go with a functional API where you have to define your inputs, your outputs, and your layers. And for each layer, you need to define what your input would be, which is typically raw input or an output coming from the previous layer. So in this specific example, your input is basically the image. You define the layer, and it, you, you specify what the input is to that layer. So layer one output is specified as input to the layer to layer two, and so on, and you have your output. So these are two different ways you can build your model. You can follow this up with model.compile, model.fit with your training data to have a trained classifier model. So Keras CV, so I'd like to throw some light on Keras CV as it was a new addition to the Keras ecosystem in the past year. So what is Keras CV? It's basically a toolbox of modular building, blo modular building blocks that computer vision engineers can leverage to develop production grade, state of the art training and inference pipeline for common computer vision workflows. Keras offers a bunch of things, uh, starting with layers like pre-processing layers, data augmentation, regularization layers, cocoa metrics, off-the-shelf models, uh, loss functions, and bounding box formats and utilities. Like you know that your data sets come with different bounding box formats and you don't have to deal with you know, the overhead code of converting the format using that in. So we have a bunch of utilities that you can use, and Keras CV works with literally every bounding box format that is out there. So augmentation layers. Uh, Keras CV offers more than 30 augmentation layers. All the layers are optimized with vectorized implementations. That is, your training and inference runs faster than your regular implementations. The augmentations are done for entire data, not just images. So uh, it, that is images, your targets, key points, bounding boxes, everything in one go. Uh, the layer supports ragged bounding boxes too. Uh, you, that, that is typically the case when you have a batch of images. Every image has a different number of bounding boxes. Having that ragged bounding box support is re, would really reduce the code overhead where you don't have to pad them and then filter them and then and so on. So the layers ha typically have, OK, so here is an example of how to instantiate this augmentation layer and how to use it with your data. So what you do is you just use Keras layers preprocessing. In this case, I'm, I'm, the, this example is with random rotation. So you initialize random rotation, and it usually all the augmentation layers have this argument called factor, which basically allows you to tune how random do you want your augmentations to be, and specify the bounding box format of your input. And then you need to format your data with images uh, as a dict of images. Optionally, if you want to augment bounding boxes, you can add bounding boxes, targets, key points, et cetera. You just pass this input data to your augmentation layer, and then you get an augmented output, which is augmented image, augmented bounding box, labels, et cetera. So object detection API. So Keras CV offers a complete set of APIs that allows you to train your own state-of-the-art production-grade object detection model. These APIs include data set loaders, object detection specific augmentation layers, models, and cocoa metrics. A complete tutorial can be found on Keras.io page. Uh, here is a small snippet of code to showcase how to instantiate a retina net model using Keras CV. So you decide what model you want to use. For example, here, retina net. Define how many classes you want to classify. Specify the bounding box format of your data. What, back, what backbone do you want to use? And what weights do you want to initialize your model with? Do you want to rescale your inputs? That is, if you want to use it from 0 to 1 or 0 to 255, set it to true or false. And then there you have it. You have your RetinaNet model in just a few lines of code. Keras NLP was another new addition to the Keras ecosystem in the past year. This is uh, for natural language processing. So Keras NLP is a toolbox of model of building blocks that allows NLP engineers to leverage and develop production grade state of the art training and inference pipelines for common NLP workflows. Again, Keras NLP implementations are TF graph compatible, which enables you to perform training and inference faster. That is, you can use 
add tf.function decorator to any of the any of the code from Keras NLP, and you will be able to run your code faster. Uh, Keras NLP offers pre-trained tokenizers like word piece, sentence piece, byte, Unicode character, and it offers a bunch of layers like transformer encoder, transformer decoder, etc. Uh, metrics like rules, text generation utilities, pre-trained models. It's still ongoing, and it should be out in a few days. Uh, here's an example of a tiny bot built using Keras NLP. Uh, the code that you see on the left is basically implementing the encoder block that you see on the right. So it's using a functional API, like I mentioned before, to build this model because it is a directed acyclic graph. So you define your inputs and use a Keras NLP's token and positioning embedding layer. Define the vocab size, maximum length of input sequence, embedding output dimension. If you want to mask specially padded input values equal to zero or not, set that in. And then now you have your embedding layer. And following that is your transformer encoder block. So this whole block that you see can be added to your model with just one line of code from Keras NLP. You just call Keras NLP layers transformer encoder specify the number of heads for your multi-head attention and intermediate dimension, and then you have that code ready to go. And you have n such blocks, so you just put it in a for loop, extract the feature, and classify using global average pooling and a tense layer, and you have your tiny bot model ready to go. So basically, you could use this model, for example, you could use IMDB reviews to train this model and to classify if a review is positive or negative with just a few lines of code. Keras Tuner. Uh, so Keras Tuner is an easy to use, scalable, hyperparameter optimization framework that solves the pain points of hyperparameter search. You can easily configure your search space with a defined by run syntax, then leverage one of the available search algorithms to find the best hyperparameter values for your models. Keras Tuner comes with Bayesian optimization, hyperband, uh, random search algorithms built in. Uh, it is defined, it, it's designed to be easy for researchers to extend in order to experiment with new uh, search algorithms. Uh, using Keras Tuner, you'll be able to tune your model architecture, like the number of nodes in a layer or the activation functions to choose, whether to use dropout layers or not, or what learning rates do you want to use, et cetera. You don't have to break your head. You could just set these values to be configured and just run the Keras Tuner, and you'll be able to get the tuned hyperparameter that's best for your model. So for example, I have an example here on the right to showcase how to do hyperparameter tuning for model architecture here. So in this build model function, you can see that we're, we're trying to tune how many nodes to use in a dense layer. And you do that by passing the hyperparameter uh, object to this model function. And using that, you specify what you want to tune in your model. In this case, it, I'm using hp.choice. 8, 16, 32. So basically, you're trying to tune this model. You don't know how many units works best. You're just trying to choose one among these three. You just set that in. And following that, you, you, you initialize your Keras tuner, in this case, with random search. You specify your model, your built model, and objective. That is, what do you want it, want it to make better that is your validation loss. So you, you need to tune your model to make what better. So And how many number of tries do you want to get a tuner to, to try? And after initializing the tuner, you start the search, and then you get the best model. You get a list of best models, and you can choose what you want to work with. So extending that to model training and data processing. So if you want to extend hyperparameter tuning for uh, model training and data processing, you're going to have to subclass the Keras Tuner hypermodel class. And if you want, so overriding the hypermodel build and hypermodel.fit helps you tune model building or training process respectively. And in this particular example, we're doing all three. One, we are trying to figure out what's the best number of units I want in my dense layer. Second, we are also trying to do 
um, it, it, we're trying to tune training here by defining, I don't know if I want to tune uh, by shuffle, do I want to shuffle my data at each epoch or not? I don't know, so I want to tune that as a Boolean value. And on the data processing end, I want to see if I want to normalize my data before feeding it to the model. So as you can see, we have uh, hp.in trying to select how many units in the dense layer. We have hp.boolean, whether we want to normalize the layer or not, and shuffle hp.boolean. We're trying, we're trying to see if you want to shuffle the data at each epoch or not. And like shown in the previous slide, you would initialize the tuner, pass this model, start the search, and get the best model. And you could use this amazing tool to simply tune anything you want. In this example, you can find a value of x, which minimizes the function x squared plus 1. So you would just define x as a hyperparameter in the, function, uh, in the function above, and then you would return f of x as the objective value. And the hyperparameter model and objective argument for initializing the tuner can be omitted here. And you would initialize the tuner and then start the search and get the best hyperparameters. Uh, distribution APIs. So when it comes to large-scale training, performance matters. And distribution APIs intend to cover a number of use cases along few axes. So it depends on whether your training is done synchronously or asynchronously or what different hardware is being used. And uh, like, for example, are you using single machines with multiple accelerators, multiple machines without accelerators, multiple machines with accelerators? So uh, Keras offers different strategies to uh, for every specific use case. So in a nutshell, what you have to do is figure out what strategy works best for your use case. Define your model as usual, and then just enclose it in strategy.scope, and you're good to go. That was just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, do check out the keras.io page. There's intensive documentation and lots of examples for you to work with. And if you would like to contribute to Keras, please do. Um, that is all I have. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.